Hello, everyone, and thank you for watching this video. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be speaking about something that is a bit different than uh, what I usually speak about uh, on the subject of apologetics. And over the last couple of years, I've spoken on this subject because it is uh, extremely necessary, and this is my only kind of avenue to get the word out, uh, considering that we live in an age where there is also a war of information that couples itself will with actual war. And in this situation, there is an actual war. It's really frustrating to me when I see other conflicts in the world uh, that people rally around and support, like the Ukraine-Russia situation, that everybody joins hands and supports the cause, especially in the Christian community, and gets the word out, gets the information out, educates the public. But when it comes to Armenia and the issues that take place in Armenia, everybody is very silent, especially the Christian community. Uh, and this happens uh, predominantly because of the ignorance uh, that people have about Armenia, where Armenia is, and uh, why Armenia is even important. Um, or it just happens because of carelessness, because it's not a fad, because, you know, CNN's not talking about it, and Fox News is not talking about it, and MSNBC is not talking about it, and all that stuff. So, I'm going to share a video with you guys from a friend of mine who's on the ground in Armenia, who's a missionary in Armenia, and uh, he will explain the situation. Uh, now, this is time-sensitive stuff. This is as of September the 13th, about midday in Armenia, and when future information comes out as to what is taking place, then I will do my best to share that with you guys. So we're going to listen to Dr. Jacob Persley. I live in Yerevan, Armenia. It's September 13th. It's nine in the morning of the year 2022. And I just woke up uh, this morning to find out that the country that I live in here is once again being attacked by Muslim countries from Azerbaijan backed by Turkey. And I just want to say the importance of Armenia. Armenia is kind of like uh, for the United States, I would say this is like the second Israel in the sense that it is a very strategic location. It's located in the very heart of the Muslim world, Turkey to its west, Azerbaijan to its east and to its south, Iran and to the north Georgia and then the northern Caucasus region of Russia. And this happens to be where its location, one of the only kind of really free dem democratic uh, nations. Um, it is not like that in Azerbaijan. There's a dictatorship there. Turkey is going towards a new Ottoman style, uh, style government under Tayyip Erdogan. And uh, these are majority Muslim countries. And here we have this Christian country located in the, the center of this whole thing. And uh, it's a country that first accepted uh, Jesus and Christianity in the year 301 AD. And it has preserved its faith ever since that time. And it's, it's pretty remarkable how God has protected this country through uh, Islamic invasions, uh, Seljuk invasions, uh, under Soviet suppression of Christianity for all these years. And now there are churches, literally, all of these uh, villages, all throughout here, this country of Armenia, there is churches, people that love Jesus, worship Jesus, they read Bibles. I'm saying this for all my friends back in the States that are in, in the churches that know me and pray for me, that, that we literally have churches everywhere. And uh, now they're being attacked once again, and I want you to know that we need prayer. This is a very strategic country for the gospel. And the, the Christians here need prayer. And also, if you know anybody uh, in the government, and again, I asked this last time that we were attacked back on September 27th of 2020 during a 44-day war, I asked that you would write senators, congressmen, and people that you might know to... Uh, First, inform them that there is a country named Armenia that is being attacked by Muslim uh, forces, terrorist forces as well, because they also hired Islamic ISIS terrorists from Syria to come up and attack Armenia to take the heads off Christians. They did that last time. And I asked to, for you to write them, uh, uh, senators and, and, and congressmen, uh, so that they would be aware and that they would do something about that. Again, I'm just saying... Same issue again. And one more thing to say about this as well is I've been following the Azeri news again today and Turkish news. And everything they say to their people is 100% lies. 
they said, oh, Armenia, you know, I was listening to some commentators. Let me just say what they said. They were like, I, I, I don't, we don't understand. Why is Armenia attacking? Well, like, of course Armenia is not attacking. It's a tiny country of 3 million people surrounded by 15 million Muslims to the, the east and 90 million Muslims uh, to the uh, west that both want to destroy them. They're not in their a small developing country with 3 million people. They're not going to be just propagating and attacking and invading uh, any country surrounding them. They cannot do that. Okay. One. So the news commentators were like, well, we just, why would they do that? And we just don't understand. And, uh, and because you read, listen to the Ministry of Defense from Azerbaijan, they're like, oh, Armenia has attacked, they're going in and they're attacking our cities and we're just re responding in retaliation. And, and that's just not true at all. I just want to say this is not a complicated issue. This is, again, for my friends in the United States listening, if you're not Armenian, you need to hear this. There is a clear black and white on this one. Uh, again, uh, Satan has stirred up the Azeris and they're stirring up the Turkic peoples again against Armenia because Armenia is a Christian nation. There are so many believers all over this place and uh, they are people have been coming to faith left and right through the preaching of the word of God in this country. And there's been changed lives all over this country and Satan hates this. And the way he does this is to kill, to steal, and destroy. And he stirs up people against God's people. And that's exactly what's happening. It's very cut and dry. But again, we have something we can do about it as United States citizens. So there are a number of things that I would like to emphasize here. Number one, when you hear uh, news or read stuff on Twitter and Facebook, and you see words like, clashes on the border erupt or something like that, these neutralistic kind of sounding nonsense. It's completely false. Azerbaijan is the aggressor here. They just won a war two years ago, according to them, that they decimated the Armenian army and stuff like that. Why would Armenia be attacking them? Armenians are the aggressors here. It's very clear that Azerbaijan are the aggressors. It's very clear that they have their eye on the southern part of Armenia and they want to unify themselves and connect themselves with a region called Nakhichevan and through that with Turkey. They are much larger in population. Armenia has about 3 million population and Jacob mentioned the numbers for Turkey and Azerbaijan. And just go and listen to their... I don't want to say president, to be all, in all honesty, because he is a dictator. He is a hereditary kind of leader following after his father. And he's got it set up in a way where his wife or his children will take over after him. They are ruthless. They have their teeth sharpened and they're really going after not only the land of Armenia, but Armenians themselves. You can do very basic research on the subject and see the sort of stuff that they did to people that they captured. Uh, anything from beheadings, and it's not just soldiers, I mean, beheading old uh, old people, uh, where you get these Islamists that jump on top of churches and go into churches and decimate the churches and yell out, Allah Akbar. And then in the comment sections, I'm sure there's going to be some Azeris and Turks that are going to come in there and say, you're lying. This is not a religious war. Well, if it's not a religious war, why are you shouting God is great on top of a church? Why are you guys converting churches into mosques? Why are you bringing in religious terrorists to do your fighting for you? In this part of the world, as I've said in the past, separating politics from religion is extremely difficult. They're almost always connected to one another. And that's very difficult for Westerners and Americans specifically to understand. But that is the reality. So if you would please shift your attention away from Ukraine and Russia just a little bit and pay attention to maybe to you or maybe to the deaf and dumb world, a very insignificant part of the world, pay attention to my people, pay attention to the land of my birth. Pay attention to my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much.